Most of you know me, I'm Victoria Schmidt, and this is Cindy Paul and the Freedom Corral. <laughs> okay. Um, just a couple of housekeeping announcements. Uh, they're not here yet, but they are bringing out coffee for those of you who um, are addicted. And um, it's five pesos per cup, so there's not a better price anywhere. And if I can get Kelly um, to come out here, uh, she has a couple of announcements about Jim's books. Here's Kelly. Good morning. Margaret Van Every couldn't be here today to sell Jim's books, so I have them at a table in the restaurant. We have uh, some of his older books. Uh, some of which are signed and, will, and are out of print and may become collector's items. And the proceeds from the sales for these go to Jim's widow, Marta. And then we also have his latest book, The Alphabet of Longing, for 250 pesos, which is just gorgeous. And in the back of it, this is a really innovative and wonderful thing, there's a little glyph here. You can download this application for a QR code and play it, and there's an actual video of Jim reading his poetry. And so it brings his wonderful smile, his ever-ready smile, and his deep bass voice back, back to life for us for a few moments. So it's, it's a really beautiful book, and we'll have those in on the table inside. Okay, thank you. Okay, the chorale is going to sing it for a while, and then we'll have people who have signed up to speak. Um, so enjoy. The snowy mantle cold and green, the unborn grass lies waiting for its gold to turn to green. The snowbird sings the song he always sings, and speaks to me a flower that I will bloom again in spring. When I was young, my heart was young then too. Anything that it would tell me, that's the thing that I would do. But now I feel such emptiness within. For the thing that I want most in life is the thing that I can't live. Spread your tiny wings and fly away. And take the snow back with you where it came from on that day. The one I love forever is untrue. And if I could, you know that I would fly away with you. The breeze along the river seems to say that it'll only break my heart again if I decide to stay. So let's go over and take me with you when you go to that land of gentle breezes where the peaceful waters flow. Spread your tiny wings and fly away. And take the snow back with you where it came from on that day. The one I love forever is untrue. And if I could, you know that I would fly away with you. Yeah, and if I could, you know that I would fly. Okay. Yeah, lovely. Those Lord, Lord, Lord. just arriving are Jim's daughter and granddaughters, uh, Victoria. And Briella was born on the day that Jim died. Gabby, Victoria, 
Gabriella. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> Victoria, this is the baby that was born. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I wanted to let you know also that she brought one of Jim's hats. And we're going to pass that hat around for contributions because earlier this morning we planted a memorial tree here on the grounds of La Nueva Posada in Jim's name. The tree is an Italian cypress and I don't know if you can see, but there's like five of them here that reach tall to the sky. This one is about this big. <laughs> and uh, we're going to have a photographing of the planting uh, ceremony afterwards. Uh, we're also, um, as we all live in Mexico, we know that even though we order things very far ahead of time, at 7 a.m. this morning, I picked up Jim's plaque. Uh, we want to put the plaque on a piece of rock so that it is there under his tree. And um, I'm going to hold it up. It's a very heavy. It's a p poem by Jim, and it's said... I have read about those wretched earthbound spirits doomed to wander here forever. Oh God, when I am dead, please make me one of them. Yay. And it is uh, James S. Tipton, uh, 1942 to 19. Of 2018. So this is the plaque that will be eventually by the tree. Now that I've done my physical exercise for the day, <laughs> um, some of you have indicated that you would like to say a few words about Jim. The first one who requested was Michael Warren, who is carrying coffee at the moment. No, nope, there he is. Okay. Um, and go ahead. We have about three minutes. Okay. Thank you, Victoria. I, I think uh, you all know about his latest book, The Alphabet of Longing. Jim Tipton who died here in Chapala recently in 2018, was already a well-known poet when he arrived here in 2005. And this book, The Alphabet of Longing, was his final gift to us and to the world. Jim was in love with life and with women and with finding perfect words for that love. He writes, even though death may be just around the corner, I still fall in love over and over and over. After arriving here in Chapala, Jim continued to write and to be a mentor for many of us who are or would be poets. He contributed to Romancing the Muse the anthology compiled by the Not Yet Dead Poets Society. He enjoyed himself enormously. I remember his appearance in the Naked Stage production of Dangerous Corner by J.B. Priestley. He laughed so much that the director, with myself, had to admonish him for getting out of his character. I remember his readings at Open Circle and at the writer's group. His voice was so resonant that he hardly needed the microphone. He was loved by many, and he loved us back. When the book, The Alphabet of Longing, was being prepared for the printer, Jim Tipton knew that he was dying. 
He had been battling cancer for several years, and this was going to be his last book. He got to Z, and he also added several more poems to make a 60-page chapbook. His dedication page says it all. To this world so beautiful that I long to live forever. Thank you, Michael. Um, Ken Salzman, I think I saw you walk in. Mm, off the cuff. These writers. Oh, I'm going to go off the cuff. Okay. Oh my, minutes. I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I'm on the list. I, I have. Um, I was unsure I would be here, and I have nothing whatsoever pre prepared. But um, I think what, uh, among the many, many things that struck me about Jim, whom I, w I was fortunate to meet when we came here in 2014, um, was the generosity of his spirit. Um, not every writer shares that trait, um, but he was... Um, always willing to give of himself to anybody who was attempting to express themselves. And, and that, that was very special, I think. The other thing, um, less personal perhaps, but I think important that stays with me, is that um, Jim, Jim was in the universe at large, Jim was a very special writer. He, um, uh, I, one of the things I used to do in my life is present a lot of famous writers in, in literary programs, and I had I had the opportunity towards the end to tell Jim um, what I believe firmly is that he was as good as any of them. A very special writer and a very special man. Ilsa Picasso Trip. Okay. Hi, good morning. Buenos dias. As many of you know, I am a very, very close friend of Jim. And then the day when he died, I wrote this because I planning to do a, a review of his last book. Okay? The, uh, the Alphabet of Longing and Other Poems is a gem that condenses wisdom, nostalgia, and intense experience of life which frequently entails a high dose of suffering. It is the testimony of having inhibited this planet as a poet of blood, as a poet of bread, woman, and honey. Jim, considered by most of his friends as a magnificent person, was tan bueno como el pan, as the Mexicans say, as good as bread. Godness that permits his words, godness of blue look with which he sees the world, accepting a destiny that converts the inevitable into a praise of love for life, metaphors and phrases that summarize years of loneliness, fear, love, and infinite tenders towards the feminine, acceptance of a crucial moment with farewells of singing and roses. Farewells that have gone so far to the day that his gaze was no longer blue. At this time, subconscious recognized something, and its colorless eyes asked why. Luke lost as, as a child, the lonely child who decades later, sorry, decades after, drove himself lonely in the universe. Child who looks for his mother, and as soon as he see her, he died at 9.45 a.m. 
Oh, dear friend, after so much, his struggle, his frontal attitude to death, his courage of many nights, after so much suffering to die one, as the poet Miguel Hernandez said. The agony of a poet is not the same as other. Somehow the words dance in the air, and his spirit takes us in a second to the road full of flower, adventures, and experience. His life, an integrated brocade of sun and smiles, Mexicans and Americans, his love for Mexico, his body large, sometimes biblical, with a golden voice internal and external. Moreover, the blue eyes that Isabel Allende loved. No one better than him to act his poems. Oh, dear friend, how much you talk me, how much you give me to everybody, and that is your best inheritance, how you gave us love. You was in love with the face of woman, with the faces of all women, the women who looked adorable and you surrendered them like a poet, with a compliment for each one of those around you, your muscles, that no matter how much you pursue the were elusive of your lonely wolf life. How to forget that midnight and full moon ascent of the naked man running through the mountains of Colorado and shooting his poems, poems to the wind so that the echo of the canyon could return the words of love that they sowed. A man whose God's tutors, Dionysius and Hermes, alternate all his life, messenger of love with broken wings that the world restrained and racing by the airs, just as now you are already in the air, in your Buddhist energy that blesses us with an all, from the place where one day we will meet. The best tribute to a poet is not to forget it, not to forget the voice of Jim, who fortunate had the gift for poetry, a story, and song. Remember that through his image, he left us his vision as an artist. The alphabet of longing, another poem, is the testimony of his step and his learning, a great little book that summed up the essence of Jim Tipton. Then I will read in Spanish for the people who are here in Spanish. El abecedario de la añoranza y otros poemas es una joya que condensa sabiduría, nostalgia y una intensa experiencia de vida, lo que frecuentemente conlleva una alta dosis de sufrimiento. Es el testimonio de haber habitado este planeta como un poeta del amor, un poeta del pan, las mujeres y la miel. Jean, considerado por la mayoría de sus amigos y conocidos como una magnífica persona, fue tan bueno como el pan, como decimos los mexicanos, as good as bread. Bondad que permea sus palabras, bondad de mirada azul con la que ve las cosas, aceptando un destino que convierte lo inevitable en una alabanza de amor a la vida. Metáforas y frases que resumen años de soledad, de miedo y también de amor y ternura infinita hacia lo femenino. Aceptación de un momento crucial con despedidas de canto y rosas. Despedidas que han ido calando hasta el día en que su mirada ya no era azul. Un lejano subconsciente reconocía algo y sus ojos sin color preguntaban ¿por qué? Con una mirada perdida como de niño, el niño solitario que décadas antes se dibujara a sí mismo solo en el universo. Niño que busca a su madre y en cuanto la vea morirá. Ah, querido amigo, después de tanto dolor, tu lucha, tu actitud frontal a la muerte, tu valentía de muchas noches, después de tanto sufrir para morirse uno, como decía también el poeta Miguel Hernández. La agonía de un poeta no es igual a otras. De alguna manera, las palabras danzan en el aire y su espíritu nos lleva en segundos al camino lleno de flores, aventuras y experiencias. Su vida, un intricado brocado de sol y sonrisas mexicanas y americanas, su amor por México, su cuerpo grande, a veces bíblico, con una voz dorada interna y externa, y sobre todo, los ojos azules e intensos que enamoraron a Isabel Allende. Nadie mejor que él para actuar sus poemas. Ah, querido amigo, cuánto me enseñaste, cuánto diste a todos, y esa es tu mejor herencia, lo que nos diste, amor. Enamorado del amor con rostro de mujer, con las caras de todas las mujeres, las mujeres que te parecían adorables y le rendiste como de poeta, 
con un elogio para cada una de las que te rodeamos, tus musas, que más que perseguiste fueron huidizas de tu vida de lobo solitario. ¿Cómo olvidar aquella escena de medianoche y luna llena del hombre desnudo corriendo por las montañas de Colorado y gritando al viento sus poemas para que el eco del cañón les devolviera las palabras de amor que buscaban destinataria? Un hombre cuyos tutores, dioses tutores, Dionisio y Hermes, alternaron toda su vida, mensajero del amor con alas rotas que el arte de las palabras rescataron y elevaron por los aires, Así como ahora tú estás desde ya en el aire, en tu energía budista que nos bendice con un OM desde el lugar hasta un, donde un día nos encontraremos. El mejor homenaje a un poeta es no olvidarlo, no olvidar la voz de Jim, quien, afor, quien tuvo afortunado el don de la poesía, el cuento y el canto. Recordar que a través de sus imágenes nos dejó su visión de artista. El abecedario de la añoranza y otros poemas es el testimonio de su paso y su aprendizaje. Un pequeño gran libro que resume la esencia de Jim Tipton, su legado. Thank you. Thank you, Ilsa. Mel Goldberg. And after Mel Janice. Kimball, followed by Francisco. Well, I'm going to share a kind of a personal note. Uh, Jim was a very dear friend. And uh, for a long time, he was housebound. And uh, I would bring him lunch. And we'd sit and discuss poetry and uh, try to outdo each other with quotations. Uh, I thought I was pretty good, but he was far superior. To give you an idea of how broad his influence was, uh, I published my last book of haiku, which uh, I have to say that I've, I've written haiku for many years. And when I met Jim, he reawakened my love for haiku, and I've published several books. This last one was published by the Red Moon Press, and I dedicated it to Jim. Fortunately, he was able to see it before he passed away. But the publisher of Red Moon Press is Jim Cassian. And when I sent him the copy, he said, oh, are you a friend of Jim, of Jim Tipton's? I said, well, yes, I've known him for years. He says, well, make sure you say hi. I knew him many years ago. So here's another example of his far-reaching influence. Um, I really have very little more to say other than he will be seriously missed. Uh, he was a dear friend to many of us, and uh, we spent many days discussing the poetry of Rumi. Uh, those of you who know who that is, can smile, <laughs> um, because he was a real fan, and so was I. Thank you. I miss you terribly, Jim. I've never met another capable of loving so many. You were a shoelace tripper, Jim. I remember the times you tripped and fell on your nose. That's what made you so lovable. I remember the many times you supported us when we fell on ours. I remember the love in your voice and your arm around my shoulder when you would say to me, What do you think, Janie? I remember all the times you gave me a helping hand. May you be at rest among the angels. May you rest in peace. Francisco, now say something. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Uh, Jim, Tipton, Jim Tipton was my close good friend. He won't live to forever, but it's not possible. Rest in peace.
Patricia Hemingway. Ron Knight will follow Patricia. Well, I can't think of any better way to honor Jim than to read uh, two of my favorite poems from the Alphabet of Longing. They're uh, the letters H and I. So, hi. <laughs> um, he fought for tenderness and failed. Yes, true enough. But what modern Zen of sorrow compensates for this? What ants, feasting on the sweet jelly of the simple dead, can satisfy his longing? What fantasy of cheap philosophy can churn old milk to butter? But in the failing arising, some integrity of grit, some definition of the soul, some final place where honey sits in windows, where everything our lives have promised us comes in each blessed night to break the moon with us to eat. And the second one. In what sweet canyon does the deep heart sleep? How do these building blocks of sound concatenate to language? What spirit wings restore themselves each night falling toward the sun? And you, who live in pure confusion, pretending to be sane, how do you devour the pulp of old divinity. How do you honor each hour, each solitary seed and subtle rose? What language lifts itself inside of you until the dust begins to walk? The silence that surrounds us can speak for us. There is grace inside each lonely breast. Thank you, Jim. Ron Knight. Jim was a very big man. And inside that very big man was a very big heart. I probably don't need to remind everybody here about his very generous contributions to each and every one of us as a writer, um, and how good he was at just making sure that we were all just generating our own creativity and our productivity in what we did. It's one thing to talk about his impact as a writer and how phenomenal he was as a writer and as a poet. I think his other real gift was that he could see through to the very heart of each and every one of us as an individual and find our own unique voice, the way we perceived life, the way we perceived what it was that we were trying to say in the voice that we could say it. And through that, kind of metaphorically, what the, the master of our own genres uh, could be and, and probably should be. I was pleased, and he was, I guess, in so many ways, we were, we were both pleased to call each other friends from phone time on weekends to coffees that we would share in the cafes, the breakfast clubs on Wednesdays and on, on Saturdays. Um, ironically, the last thing that, when I departed, I guess, three years ago, I remember looking into Jim's eyes and looking at each other, and I kind of said, when he said goodbye, I said, you know, the funny thing is, is that in my leaving, I kind of get the funny feeling that if I ever get back, uh, some of you, were, I, I, I feel like I will be leaving Never Never Land. And he looked at me and he says, you know, the funny thing, Ron, is that if you ever do make it back, some of us may very well be in Ever Ever Land. And Jim, I, uh, <clears throat> I guess you were right. So I will uh, say, I guess just in closing here, that his understanding of all of us and his understanding of bees 
And everything he knew about the bees and how it works and how they work in the universe, kind of, and relaying that to the interconnectivity of all of us here in this lifetime as well. You know, we all seek to be, well, we're all mortal. I guess Jim's passing reminds us that we're mortal. And even though through our writings or our endeavors, we try to be immortal. That's immortal, not immoral. <laughs> well, I don't know, maybe immoral, <laughs> possibly. But how blessed we really, all of us were, that our paths were able to be shared with his and intermingled and crossed. And uh, in this lifetime, how blessed we were all to be that we all were able to share this time together with Jim combined, just how he touched all of us. Here's to the bees, Jim. Cindy Paul. Jim and I enjoyed what we both considered a spiritual relationship. We talked about anything and everything together, and it was just so easy that it seemed like we were reading each other's minds, a flow of consciousness thing. But what we talked about most were spiritual issues. We'd consider ethical problems together, the rights and the wrongs, and we'd talk about the immutable. One of his areas of genius, and there were many, was the ability to recognize truth when he saw it. In our talks, Jim often alluded to St. Paul's admonition to pray without ceasing. And I think Jim's entire life was a prayer, a prayer that celebrated being on this planet with his extraordinary gifts and a heart that just loved everybody and everything. I am still thrilled and honored to have been able to share Jim's heart. <laughs> And I miss him every day and night, always will. I wrote some tanka for this occasion. I didn't know about tanka until Jim <laughs> educated me on it. Uh, they're short haiku. His love was a vast unbroken sky without judgment, waiting. Our conversations, empathic, were more elegant when unspoken. The time you fell into the rose thorns and laughed all day. The salad days of summer when we learned to be quiet and smile. Those were mine. And this last one, this is from Jim. When you sing, Jim, the angels come to improve your pitch. Thank you, Jim. Gail Park. Like Cindy, I think my relationship with Jim was more spiritual. I never had a chance to really spend any time with him, but I admired him tremendously and loved him like probably everybody who ever met him. Uh, his tanka and haiku were ins inspiring to me. And after his death, actually in September, I started attempting to write some under his inspiration and spirit. And I thought I would read some of the, some of the ones that I like. in his memory. Starlings rush overhead, thousands of small driving wings, sound and wind. Purple tomato, I stroke its smooth, dusty skin, smell mama's garden. Full moon overhead, I lie naked in silver, taking a moon bath. And so, recent ones. Fear of scarcity stirs the cauldron of plenty with a transparent spoon. My worm etched staff. A Rorschach test of spirit in bug hieroglyphics. Uh -huh. 
high-pitched whine of elk on a cold, frosty night in pines of seeking. Morning sun slants in. Cries of strange Mexican birds. Church walls are golden. Doggy door slaps twice with each entrance and exit. Curious rhythm. Clacking drum beat for dog feet passing into another world. Bougainvillea blooms. I touch the papery flowers, lost in fuchsia. And last one I wrote for Jim. Lover, teacher, friend, behind the veil of death, reaches out to us and speaks in a poetry that we have not heard before or cannot remember. Okay. Um, my turn. Uh, I didn't come with any prepared remarks. There really isn't a moment in my day that I don't think about Jim. Uh, Jim and I became very close. We called each other brother and sister. And that means a lot to me because I always wanted a big brother. And I couldn't think of a better one to have. We talked about many things. And one of the things we talked about was our joy of writing and how we could help the writers here in Ahihik. And we came up with what was then the Chapala Writers Group, which we started and it is now in its 10th year. We've had many authors publish, many people work with us. I feel his loss most greatly when I sit in that room and I look at the empty chair that he always had it. I feel inadequate as I try to lead the group, for I don't have his vast knowledge of poetry or literature. I only have his great love of wanting to help other writers be the best that they can be. Uh, Jim was a great support to me while he was alive. He was dying, but he was so concerned because he knew my husband is also dying. We would talk on the phone every day and we would tell each other how much we loved each other. And he would always ask how Tom was doing. And no matter how hard and how sick he was, he would still come over and visit to see how things were going. He always thought of other people's needs before his own. And I'm glad to know that I have a big brother either roaming the earth or in heaven, but I know that he has gone with happiness and love in his heart. Thank you. Rosemary Grayson, I'm something of a newbie. But let me tell you that <clears throat> my relationship with Jim has been totally physical. <laughs> because, like many of us, when you walk through the door for the 
right at home. You would just get this wonderful bear hug. And that set me up for the day. Jim, thank you. <laughs> Remember this? Uh, the reason we're passing the hat is to help us cover the cost of the tree, the spade, and the plaque. And if you only if you would wish to contribute, please do so. I'm going to pass that around now. Cindy's group is going to sing, and afterwards, we're going to take pictures of the tree, and Ilsa is going to be uh, the <clears throat> tree planter, although it's already been planted. Okay. And before I let Cindy go, I want to thank Cindy for her help in organizing this, and Rose for her help with the publicity, for Brad for his help with the um, videography. We're hoping to put this onto YouTube so that we can remember it. Cindy's group will sing hallelujah. I will never in my whole life forever forget the day, the Christmas concert that we did with Jim singing this song, the Leonard Cohen Hallelujah. And everybody out there, over 100 people out there going, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. And the whole place lit up with thousands of angels. It was amazing. So sing along.